Hey everybody, this is Dale with Networking Step by Step. And in today's video cheat sheet, we're going to be manipulating OSPF's default reference bandwidth. So let's look at exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing some baseline show commands to see what the network looks like before we change the reference bandwidth. We will then change the OSPF default reference bandwidth from 100 meg to 10 gig. And then finally do some verification show commands to make sure that the network has changed. So let's take a look at the network topology. We're going to be changing the default reference bandwidth on routers 5 and 6 here in OSPF area 2. So let's get started. On router 5 I'm going to put in the show IP OSPF interface and then the interface between routers 5 and 6. For some reason it didn't Okay, and when we look at the output here, and specifically at the cost, we see that the cost is 10 because that's based off of the default reference bandwidth. Let's change that reference bandwidth. Now, reference bandwidth is based off megabits per second, so this is 10,000 megabits or 10 gig. Now as you can see when I hit enter to, to change the, the reference bandwidth, I, I got some output here that says the reference bandwidth is changed. Please ensure reference bandwidth is consistent across all routers. And that's critical because you don't want one router with the reference bandwidth based off of 10 gig and making routing decisions and then another router, in this case router 6, is still based off the default. So it, it may say, hey, the best way to get there is through router 5, but then router 5 may say, no, it's back through you. So you want to make sure that all the reference bandwidths are the same. But let's make sure that this one took. And now the cost to go out the interface is a thousand because the reference bandwidth is now 10 gig. So let's go over to router 6 and do the same command, show IP OSPF interface and then the interface to get from 6 to 5 to see what the cost is. And it's still cost of 10. Just because we changed the reference bandwidth on router 5, it didn't change it for any other routers. So you have to go through and change that on all the other routers just like the, the warning told us to. And once again, there's the warning. So then let's see if it took. And as you can see, the cost has now changed to a thousand. Now, why did the cost change from 10 to 1,000 on both routers 5 and 6? Because the default reference bandwidth was 100. The interface is an Ethernet interface, which is a 10 megabit interface. So you take the default reference bandwidth and divide it by the bandwidth that the interface can do, which is in this case was 10 meg, and that's your OSPF cost. So that was 100 divided by 10, which is 10. We changed the reference bandwidth to 10 gig. So now you take the reference bandwidth of 10 gig and divide it by your interface bandwidth, which is still 10 meg. And now we get a cost of 1,000. I hope that was helpful. Once again, pay attention to the please ensure the reference bandwidth is consistent across all routers. Once you start changing it, you need to go through the entire network and make sure that everybody that's speaking OSPF is making the same routing decisions based off the same uh, reference bandwidth. You may have noticed that our OSPF adjacency never went down. The, the, the reference bandwidth agreeing between routers is not dependent upon that. So once again, we did baseline show commands and saw that the cost was still based off the default. We changed the reference bandwidth to 10 gig, and then we did some verification show commands and now and verified that the reference bandwidth is now based off of 10 gig. I hope it's been helpful, and we'll see you um, in the next video cheat sheet.